from white people. Black people obviously make their own contributions, but most people are not conscious of that. What, what, what the Africans see and what the world see is that white people is helping black people. And what, what I realize that cements in the minds of the African, that is, it's only white people that can look up to. Um, it cement in the minds of the world that Africa can only get by through the benevolence and the grace of the white people. And that needs to change. So it, it is important, I think, now, it's always been important, but it's particularly important now mm. that Afri Africa can see Africans in the West supporting Africa, supporting the reconstruction, because we're going through a, a phase now where Africa is reconstituting itself. And us in the West have got to be part of that. And really, we have enough people in the West, people of African descent, who have money, who have money. We have some enough money about China. Why should all the support be coming from white people? So, like I say, what that does is damages the psyche of the African race. And if we as a people, you see, when we talk about Black Lives Matter and all these struggles that we as Black people going through, what we've got to recognize is that the reason we're going through this, you know, our significant part of the reason is the fact that the world looks down on Africa. Let's face the fact. Mm -hmm. Even we as black people here in the West, mm -hmm. a lot of us look down on Africa. True. Right? And so because of that mindset that Africa is so true. down there, so. True, true, true. true. And true. the rest of the world is up there, so. Yeah? That mindset. So <laughs> we had a mindset program. So yes, yes, sir. So mindset. Mindset. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> you have to start to address the mindset. True, so, true, 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 true. Yeah. Because now, that mindset means that a lot of us in the West, all we want now is to raise our money for ourselves and have big this and big that and, you know, and glorify ourselves. Uh, true. But we don't realize that no matter how much we have, no matter how much we have, we are still seen as black people. True, true, true. true. So, so even, even the, uh, like even the footballers, the man are old, the man are old, earn ridiculous money, right? Still, they're getting racist abuse. They're still getting racist abuse, you know? So that means no matter how much you earn, no matter who you is, mm -hmm. you, are still seen, you are still seen as a black man. So the only way things are going to change for us is that the perception of Africa needs to, be, needs to change. And if we are going to change the perception of Africa, then the sort of things that um, make us look like when you say, Archer, Africa, I know, is the birthplace of the human race. And we, we think most of people, most people don't think about Africa, they think about slavery and, and poverty. And most people don't realize that we are the founding of everything that man knows as civilization. And we have to go back or go forward to that point where now Africa is recognized for what Africa and who Africa is. And that is part of that journey, that part of that work. Us in the West have now got a link. We've got to link hands and arms together, whether in Africa, in the Caribbean, wherever black people are, we're now supposed to be uniting and presenting a, a, a positive view of Africa for the world to see. When the world starts to look, look up to Africa, then they will look up to each and of each one of us as individuals. So we are, we're going to have to, um, Africa is going through a renaissance and we all have to be part of that. See, we said we talk so long about me can talk all day, so go on. Yeah, well, um, uh, so all, all, all that change are going to go on, you know, because you you have like, um, you know, the, the, the people in power now is, you know, like politicians and, you know, governments is them going really after um kind of make certain decision where that is concerned because when all right when you look now you still find out say um outsiders 
is the one that you know is like developing then it's like we can develop for ourselves inside of africa we have to we have to get outsiders to come and develop for us like you know we we are not developers you know what i mean when we we, we 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 we're supposed to have these necessary people in place you know we we, we shouldn't have your uh, input workers so it, yes, it, okay. it going to have a change from you know the government's going to have a change the type of um, deals and them type of things you know where them they make for the country all right i hear they are, yeah but i don't think we have to depend on governments we as individuals can do what we can do because like i say i as, a, as one man went to went to south africa and i could see what difference it made to the people just one man right if if I, I i started an organization yeah called seed for africa and seed is an acronym for self-empowerment and economic development and the, the whole idea behind the organization was that we now want to um, harness the wealth that black people in the West have, because so much you have so much, you have so, so much sports people, um, singers, all kind of people, who earn money like dirt, dirt. Why, 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 why man want to do so much money, where some of that money can be used to make constructive development in Africa? We don't have to de depend on um, the on foreigners. We have it within ourselves. It's just that we don't have the mindset to realize that that's what we now need to do. So, um, yeah, I have, said, I have to tell you this still, you know, that there are people who are now engaging with that idea. And people might be surprised to learn how many people now, uh, how many black people are moving into Africa. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> you see, especially young people too you know we're not we're not we're not now talking about rasta people we are talking about business people all sort of people are now moving into africa because it is recognized that africa is where it is at everybody want a piece of africa you know except me everybody want a piece of africa except we and we are run from africa if if you if you go up on a, up on a plane and go to go to Africa. It's recently now you start to see black people going to Africa. But before you go up on a plane and it's pure white people, you're good for some one or two um, black people who perhaps going back for the holiday or something like that. White people going to Africa because what? They know that Africa is where it is at. And when I'm going, they are reap, reaping the benefit of being in Africa. So the businesses, I don't want to set up the business them, right? It was imply the, 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 the black man for a little, little dirt and they will make the money and take the money out. None of them will ever pay tax. So we supposed to be doing all of that and we have the resources. It's just that we don't have the mindset. And as I said, we have to recognize that the reason there, there's, there's a need for an, an, an organization like Black, black Lives Matter because the world don't think Black Lives Matter. Because we, do, we, we, we are going like we, sure, sometimes, you know, we as a race, we are failing to recognize who we are and because we have the sort of power that most of the rest of the world don't have. But we now use it, we use it against one another. Instead of using it together, because if Africa, what well you say, right now, Africa is moving in that direction, you know. Africa is moving in that di direction. But us in the West now need to be part of that movement. So even today, this, this day we were talking about, so, a brother read me from, from Kenya. And is a, is a, um, a youth who start an organization, you know. And this organization has been going for a year. And the, the, 
organization is part of the, re the reconstruction of Africa. The youth, the youth are the ones who are going to do it. And what was pleasing to me today is that when he called me, he called me with an elder. This man is 76 years old. And the elder is also supporting him. So even the, even the older now, we think, say, the older people now, them gone past it. Even the older generation are now waking up to say, listen, we've got to do things to make a change. But that change will come about when us in the West become part of that, of that change. So even, even, uh, even the, the, the man who have no, who have no money, yeah? uh, the man in the ghetto who can't afford nothing, right? If, if the old vibes now is that, yes, we are going to focus on Africa, it makes others want to do that. Because if, you know, so, so you talk about governments, if the whole citizen of Jamaica then, so, so what, 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 what not deal with it, Africa? And, and people know, the government knows that, then the government have to respond. But, like I said. But the, pe yeah, watch out, the people, the people, most of you have to remember, sir, most of the people, you know, them not accept themselves as Africans, you know. Because you have some, you have some people in the in in Caribbean, Jamaica, for instance, and that's where my born and grow. Zin, you can't tell some Jamaicans so them are African, them say, yo, them no, 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 African. Zin, so, so you find out, say, that, 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 um, the mindset that we most of the people them have, it going hard for all of the people them start to think that way in the diaspora, in the West, yeah. Yeah, man, it, I, it, I know it, that. It's it, it, a few, it's a, it's a handful of people who, right now, are, are agitated for say, boy, I even said them are African, it's a handful of people right now in the diaspora, not every... Um, African in the diaspora said so they are African. So, you know, that's why we have an issue. Yeah, I know that. Yeah, but you see, what I'm trying to say to you now is that that is changing. Right? And we who are conscious of the need, need now to accelerate that change. Because you see, even now, even we are talking right just now. Mm -hmm. yeah, that conversation, you know, is going to reach somewhere. And there's going to be somebody somewhere you who perhaps wasn't thinking that way that might begin to think, say, you know, perhaps it's true. Because the bottom line, as I say, is that we are not going anywhere as a people unless we recognize, unless the race is recognized. As long as the African race is looked look down upon, you, who is a member of that race, you're also looked down on. So the only way for you to elevate yourself or be elevated is for the, the race to, uh, to be elevated. It's like mm -hmm. a man. <clears throat> it's like a man <clears throat> belong to a family. And the family is known to be cook and worthless family. You belong to that family. People are going to look at you as being belonging to that family. You understand what I'm saying? True. So we have, we have to know that the problems that we are facing, we are facing these problems because the world, including the, the, the African himself, look down on Africa. So we have to change our mindsets to make a change to our benefits. Because, so you find so now, right, I'm going to show you. <clears throat> part, of, part of the problem still you now is ignorance. And when I say ignorance, I mean that in the real sense of the word. Ignorance means you don't know. Mm -hmm. And there's um, the through this what I'm called the slave trade. It doesn't start trading now because trade means your 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 gifts and take. No, this was a trade. This was a Holocaust basically. But uh, <clears throat> what what people sort of don't recognize is that because of this slave trade, what I'm calling it, the, the, the white man needed to make Africa seem like we are nobody because they claim themselves to be Christians. So Christians can't be treating people like that. If you are real a Christian, you're a Christian, the Bible tells us like, you must love one another and blah, blah, blah. So they had to make the African look like they were 
less than humans. But the, 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 the you hear what you're saying about the thing is now, you know, you say the Bible, the Bible is not Christian, you know, the people are not Christian, you know. The Bible is yeah, just a Bible, a book, and the people them say, them is Christian. Now, when you check them people, you know, feed them, um, feed them religion, you know, be so powerful, killing and pillaging and raping and stealing and all of them something there, you know. So you are find out, say, at that, they are going to perpetrate. That is what going to come out. That is what they're going to do. You understand? So, and, and that right. is what they they, they, they they done over the years. But if tell the Africans them that they are less than human, it, it, it that you know that is even going too far. Yeah, too but far. what I'm trying to say to you, what I'm trying to say to you is, if you look into the history of the thing, yeah, that is what the white man did. He purposely um, <clears throat> create the image. Because he needed to create that image. Because if he don't, if he did not create that image, then he could not justify what he was doing. So um, the the black man had to be portrayed as not being a human. Mm. But, I mean, that's literally, you know, the the, the 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 black man was was portrayed as being half human. Even in America, um, <clears throat> their constitution and something I can't remember what it got, but define. The, the, the black man has one once a fraction of a human being and that was that was the view that was maintained so during that period you know they wipe out the real history of africa so people now nowadays don't know their own history and if 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 the black man came to know who he really is then well i said what were you talking about so let me tell you something right you see, all right, if you, all right, when you talk about Egypt, I'm going to show you how the thing works. Egypt is the most advanced civilization that man has ever known, even today. Man don't understand how the man that do the things what them do. The man them build something that they, they, they think is still standing today. Them can't understand all the, all the scientific work them have. They can't figure out. Up to this day, they can't figure out how those men built that. They, they don't understand it. Up to today. They're, they're, up to today, they don't understand it. Mm -hmm. And it is and it is not just that. Um, uh, people in Africa was doing heart surgery years and hundreds of years ago, right? But what they did, they separated in the minds of people, Egypt from the rest of Africa. But Egypt is in Africa, you know? Yeah, man. And the people. Not Africa. And the pe yes, Egypt is in Africa. And Not the, the Africa. people, right, and the people who did this were black people. But what happened is that when, when the Europeans come into Africa, obviously, the, the North Africa, the North of Africa is the, is the easiest point of entry. They couldn't come in from the South. We got them coming from e Europe. Mm -hmm. So they're coming to Africa, yeah. coming to, to Egypt. When they're coming to Egypt, yeah, because of the nature of black people, we accepted them. Just, we just like next human being. And so after a while, um, some Europeans become fearers. You see, but there's a, there's a whole part to this issue, you know, but the, the bottom line is over the over the years, over the years, um, South Africa, sorry, Egypt become less and less black because of people coming in. Mm -hmm. But the original Egyptians were black people. Right? I mean <clears throat> the word Egypt, you know, means black land. You know that? See. That was that was the original. Um, if you all right, a man um, named Herodotus, who people who these academics who study history know Herodotus as being the father of history. That means they consider Herodotus as being the first historian to write history. Herodotus lived. Um, I can't remember exactly how long, but years before, in BC, 
some BC, Herodotus, um, if you read, so, so I, I point you to all these things. If you read the histories by Herodotus, when Herodotus talks about Africa, you can see how in his time, Africa was viewed. Africa was viewed with, with the highest regard, the highest regard, especially Ethiopia, right? In fact, in the histories, um, the histories about a war between Persia you know, and the Greeks. And although Herodotus is a Greek, you can see that man is not, when you read the thing, you can see the man is not biased. And when, when he's talking about the, the different nations, he talk about the Persians, the, the this, the that. But when he, when he talk about Ethiopia, he always use a special title. No other race get that title in, in this thing, in this book by Herodotus. He refers to the Ethiopians as the, the long-lived Ethiopians. He talked about going, um, seeing this man, he talked about um, the Colchians. And he says that the Colchians say that they're originally from Egypt. And he said he personally believed them because, you know what I'm saying now? Not only because they have they have got black skin and woolly hair. That means, you know, the Egyptian that he, he knew had black skin and woolly hair. Mm -hmm. He says that is not, not that's not the only reason. He says one reason why I really believe in Colchians is because they, along with the Ethiopians, are people who practice circumcision from from way back. So <laughs> listen man, you talk about the Dogans, there's a book. Um, called um, The Serious Mystery. The Serious Mystery. And in this book, the brother who write the book, he's trying to use this thing about serious to prove that men have come from outer space. Because what he found, there's a tribe in Africa called the Dogans. And the Dogans, they the, the, the whole life and system is based around a star. And they, they are talking about this star in, in my, minute detail. But Western scientists never know that this star exists. They might think these people are talking nonsense. And it's in, I think it's in the 50s that they discovered the star. And when they discovered the star, they found out that everything that these people are saying was right down to the down to the last letter. They talk about the orbit of the star. So they go into so much detail. Mm. But what the man who write the, what the man who write the book is trying to say that the only way Africans could know this, man must have come from outer space to tell them that. What he don't realize is that Africans were the earliest astronomers. Africans were the earliest astronomers. Yes, all of those all of those things are, 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 are now lost to us. But there are people now, you know, who know are uncovering these things. Mm -hmm. And a lot of information is out there now. Yeah, man. Make, make a ones know that really Africa is not what we have led, to, we've been led to believe Africa is. And upon, on, on top of everything, Africa is a continent that have everything. Anything that man wants, you can find it in Africa. That's why the Chinese are there. That's why everybody run. That's why. That's why, the, the, the white man held on to South Africa so long enough. You know? Don't want to let it go. But may I ask you this about um, South Africa? Um, yes. A few years, uh, I, I think about two, two, three years ago. Uh, probably longer than that still. But um. The, 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 there was a saying that um, the, 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 the Europeans needed to leave and they needed to give up the farm's lands without um, compensation. Um, or, 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 or you view that? So, um, you're talking about Zimbabwe or South Africa? Because, South um, Africa. Zimbabwe. South uh, Africa, South I think Africa. Malabe, um, but the Virgin name was mostly the one who was um, agitating towards that still. All right. So, okay, what you, what, you, what you have, right, is that 
after Mandela get released and you know and try to bring bring the country together and he seemed to be of the view that it don't make sense we are fights because if you go and fight people just going dead right so him try to build what they call a rainbow nation well you know we have to realize you know that people are people and we ne must never forget that and so once once black people now take control then the sort of things that you have all over where black man now to abuse their own people that now start to take effect so you 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 you, you get an abuse now you know you know in africa now from africans from africans themselves right so but there's a brother um um malamo malimo I can't remember my name yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. So, but as I say, the youth are the ones now who are making the change. So, so the things that I'm saying is the sort of things that he's saying too. And and part of what he's saying is that <clears throat> the the I don't want to misquote him and say say something wrong. I'm not saying. But the bottom line, right? But the bottom line is what what I'm saying is that. The white man, what him have in Africa, in South Africa, don't belong to him. He's a foreigner, and him come and take him. He's not even say you give to him, mm -hmm. and I buy it. Yeah, him come and take your things, right? So, if if things have to be how it's supposed to be, then have to give up them thing they know and share up the thing, but they want to hold on to what them. What them take, they want to hold on to it. Yeah. So, and you, you have those in government who, because some people you know, from from them are right, them are right, and that happen all over the place. So, so what what we have, you know, is an ongoing struggle between the abnats and those who have and want to keep what them have. Mm. And that's what they, and that's what they, that's not the thing there. Understand? But it's a struggle that that is going to be won. Because more and more people from the West, from within Africa, are beginning to engage with that struggle. So I have no doubt that that struggle is going to be won. And it's going to be won quick, more quickly than most people, a lot of people think. Because Africa is on the move. Um, I I visualize, I've always said that the 21st century is the African century. Africa has got to find its feet, but there's a there's a delicate balance um, happening here. And even the politicians are beginning to move in that direction because that's what Alice Lassie was about, you know. When Alice Lassie formed the, Afri the whole organization of African unity, you were to say the organization of, of African unity um, there was a need for Africa to become one nation, one nation, because um, <clears throat> there was a, um, a sister, I can't remember her name now because sometimes my brain, my memory don't function too well, but this, um, she used to be <clears throat> a spokesperson, you no, know, an ambassador, US ambassador for the, for the, um, you, a, not, yeah, yeah, man. Yes, yes. She used to be right, and she and others like her are now saying, "We, you know, have to throw out the Europeans in the real sense because they've been thrown out politically, but they are not thrown out in terms of the power." And we now, as black people, have to come together and see that this happen, and. The, the the leaders in, in Africa are beginning to wake up to that as well. Because now, whereas um, in 1963, when um, Selassie and them formed the, the, the OAU, it, 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 did not be, it did not become what it was supposed to become. But this year, this year where we live in now, right, Africa, um, they have now breaking down borders and creating um, you know, like when you talk about the European Union, 
Yeah. We're now moving. We mo we, we, mo we are now moving that direction in Africa. So Africa is getting its act together, and we and the West have got to be part of that that action. We want to help make it happen. And <clears throat> the more we the more we do. So you say we in the West, right, for, for example, Jamaica, like you say, you can't tell some people that they miss African. Some don't know what it is. Because you see, people people get confused between race and nationality. Mm, true. You, see, you can say a man is Chinese because he's of a Chinese nationality. But he can be Chinese because you have a Chinese race. You understand? So a man who a man who is born, say, say an Asian man who is born in Africa. Let's say, let's say born in in Kenya. He's a Kenyan national. He's a Kenyan national. But his race is still Asian. So there's no race named Jamaican. You are a Jamaican national, mm -hmm. but your race is African. Yes, sir. You, that you are of the, know. You have to know. You are of the African race. And even if you don't want to think you are, Afri are, are, are of the African race, the, other, the, the rest of the world, when they see you, they see an African. They see somebody who is of the African race. So until the African race is restored to its rightful, rightful place among the brotherhood of man, you who don't want to see yourself as African, the, the rest of the world see you as African. So you, you are looking down on yourself. And that's... So we have to start to look up to each other. That is what was Marcus Garvey was about. But even man, you say, I want to say, well, I would love to say something about Marcus Garvey, you know, but we run out of time. Yeah? But um, that is what Marcus Garvey was about um, restoring the dignity of the African race. Because we are a proud people. We are. We are people. We are the first people. We are the first people. All races come out of Africa. So now, those who believe in the Bible and all them kind of things, them, I, 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 I don't want to insult anybody because a, a person will know and believe what they know and believe. But we're talking about Adam and Eve and all them kind of things. The scientists will tell you that the earth has been here for billions of years. And the first people they can find, the first um, mummies and um, skeletons they can find are in Africa. All of the first skeletons that they can find are in Africa. We were the first people. And their, their scientists will tell you that all the rest, all the, all the rest of the races you know, came out of Africa, but traveled. And so it's like Africa spread out. So by the time they reach Europe, they start to lose them, lose, lose their pigmentation. Because you see me now, me born in Jamaica. Well, me even now, me not, me not black like I was when I was there in Jamaica. Come live in England too long. So imagine a race away from Africa for thousands of years. They're going to, they're going to change. So but we, we are all Africans, and we, the, we who still are pigmented, uh, all our pigments, we are still the mother and father of civilization. And the world, and the white people recognize that, you know. So it's not just about black people. Black, black man is a progenitor of, or the African man is the progenitor of, of, of man. Exactly. And so now we have to we have to now restore our pride. But the thing is, if you don't want to accept that still, you know, all what I, um all what I go on, you know, you don't know, want to accept that the African man is the progenitor of of all man and his genes is a recessive genes, which the Africans well, is 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 dominant. What do they say? What do they say? They don't want to accept it. Who, who don't want to accept it? You mean 
The white people are the black people. Why why people don't want to accept that? Why why people don't want to accept that? That is that is why you find that that even that power struggle in South Africa where they don't want to give up um um the the, the power because it's not something that they, they they don't accept it. They do not accept yeah, it. Yeah, but my brother, listen. I hear you, right? But you see, you can make generalization mm-hmm. and and when you say gener- generalization, that means say, the majority of a certain set of yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But although that is generally the case, mm-hmm. there are white people who accept it. There are white people who accept it. I can I can point you to YouTube and other kind of people where white people are saying this. White people are saying this. No, me not, so, no, 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 me not say, um, some are not saying it. Either. I'm not saying some are not saying it. All right. Okay. But All right. the, the, the majority is not saying All right. it. You know what I, I mean? Some, some, some is saying it, but the majority, which is a consolidated power, is just ones who don't see things the way um, that 90% see things. You know what I mean? That, yes. you know, that are just the reality. But yes, they, but they, when I'm, when I'm, sorry, no. go on. Yeah, man, the, 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 the majority do, do not want to accept that. You know, they still want to, you know, in America, when they look in America, um, you know, two years ago, you know, a black youth does a jog in a, in a neighborhood and, you know, some, some two white virgin, um, probably about three, four of them, one of them video it and them decide that they're going to drive down this young man and, and just murder him cold-blooded just like that. And that is because they feel like, you know, they can always do these things and, and get away with it because how oh, they see African people. See, so you can see that it's not something that, you know, the majority accept. Yeah, my brother, I, I hear you now. But what I'm trying to say to you now is that that's why I say you can make a generalization. And generally speaking, the majority don't accept it. I know that. But... The number of people who accept it now is more than accepted it 20 years ago or 30 years ago. So what I'm trying to say now, there's a growing trend towards ac- acceptance. It's something that is slowly moving, but it's growing. So, <clears throat> so, so even 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 the thing now with George George Floyd, there's a world of white people come out and say, "No, I'm not wrong." People begin to see. So. We, what, what we as people of African descent, we have to help to keep that development moving. But there are, people are moving in the right direction. It's a slow process, but it's happening. But what is, what is perhaps even more important right now is for us as a people to recognize ourselves. When we, when we recognize ourselves, recognize each other, then we're moving in the right direction. And again, that is something that is happening now. So the world, the world is moving in the right direction as far as we are, as a people are concerned. You see, but there's an issue. So right now, as far as I see it, it's a struggle, you know. It's a struggle. But uh, all right, Elder, you know, say, Kabi, you mentioned Black Lives Matter, and there's a lot of ones out there. And, I, and I, I probably would say majority of the people do not um, act, um, really gravitate to it because, you know, they must say it's been hijacked. You know what I mean? It's not run by African people. It's not an organization. Or it's not something that, you know, run by African people. And it's been hijacked and take over and I run from, you know, run by other people. Now, when 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 you talk, you know, George Floyd, I, I, I think George Floyd has amplified um that movement. The the, the the death of George Floyd has empowered that movement now to to a a, 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 a stronger um stronger organization. But why um the people them had to 
say this is wrong and, and things because it was it was it was all in the face that it was wrong. You know what I mean? It wasn't something that um could have you know was was hidden like a lot of a lot of things that you know we, we, we don't get to see. You know what I mean? A lot of youths that lose them life and you know what I mean you you, you you don't see it on video. Or police deal yes. with some 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 other people. You know what I mean? But that in incident was there. For ev the yes. whole world for see. Right, but you see now what you what you what you do, you know, what you've just done is point to something that is significant because the the the, the, the attitude that a lot of white people have towards black people, they have that attitude because of ignorance. They don't know. But when they come to know, they realize, say, hold on a minute. It's not right. But they never know what go on. So a lot of people, when they come to know, mm -hmm. they can see. So so we, as we have a duty to ourselves to make people know what they don't know. So that's even part of what we are doing right now. True. So, so while we can be in some way concerned about the white man who is ignorant, our immediate concern right now, I think, is the black man who is ignorant, because there are a lot of black people who are ignorant. And the ignorance, so when we, when we talk about ignorance, you know, sometimes in Jamaican, Excuse me. In, in Jamaican parlance, we talk ignorance means somebody has gone bad or something. No, but ignorance just means you don't know. So, the ignorance in Jamaica towards the race is something very serious. So we we have to. All right, I'm going to tell you something. So I have I have much faith in the progress of life. Because the very first time you now, the very, very first time I go to Africa, it's me and my mother go. And she's a, she's a Jehovah Witness. And, <clears throat> well, she's passed away now, but she was a Jehovah Witness. And to see a Jehovah Witness want to go to Africa just shows you that things can change. True. Sure. You know what I mean? So we have to we have to work and help to make, make that change. And, and to a certain extent, I kinda I don't like to use the word blame, right? To 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 blame other people. But we have to acknowledge some things that are not as they should be, put it like that. And I think so hold on a minute, let me ask you something. Mm -hmm. How much time we have? How much time we have now? We have 10 more we minutes. Can... We have 10 minutes. All right. Okay, okay. All right. I'm still going to ask you some questions. I'm still going to ask you some questions. All right. All right. Go on. Go on. Ask me. All right. Um, <laughs> I don't even think them things are kind of relevant still to what we really are talking about still. But kind of does um, change the course a bit. You know what I mean? Um, the, 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 I um, did, you, you did a documentary on black people in the um, 90s and later in um, 2008 the I um, it, it, it was um, it was something that was it brought you to the, 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 the Jamaica Reggae Festival um the documentary that you you there i did um yes talk to me about the the um the the documentary a little bit and 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 it making the 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 film festival in jamaica all right well that documentary was in two parts the first part looked at um the movements of black people over the past in the, in the 1900s, let me put it like that. So we never go, we never go back too far. 
Mm -hmm. right? Just to say, during the 1900s, this is what happened to black people. Yeah? And so the documentary includes things like even the works of Marcus Garvey, and it went in, into depth um, on the work of, works of Marcus Garvey. It went to, it talked about whatever things were happening, right? And part of what it talked about is how um, Rasta came forward in the, it, yeah, it just developed, it just did with um, the, the history of black people, the collective history of black people from all over. So touching America everywhere, right? But the second, the second part of the, the, the documentary now looks forward. So we, we're projecting now to what is to come, yeah? Mm -hmm. And so that is where, that is where it talks about Steve for Africa, et cetera, et cetera. But listen, why, why the film was um, given us showing at the first regular film festival is because the way the film was put together at different points where different, different things are being said, we as black people are, are reggae musicians. We have a, a song for everything. Virtually everything you can talk about, you have a song about it. So, the, the, you, you know, you, 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 do a film and it have a uh, soundtrack and music behind it? Well, the music behind most of what was, all of what was going on was reggae music. Um, and so, because of the, the, the significant co contribution that reggae music made to that film, the film was given a, a special showing at the first reggae film, film festival. So that's all that they got. Okay. All right. Talk to me about um, your time at BBC. Um, BBC, what? BBC Leicester? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Talk to me about yeah, that journey there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What, what, what you want me to tell you, say? Tell me where you used to do, man. Where you used to tell the people. I know me, because I read your bio, you know, them don't know. Them know them. And the people are more interested. I ask the, the question for the people, I'm still. <laughs> All right, okay. Well, well, listen. You said we'd have 10 minutes, and I think I have one, one more minute. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And there's a lot of things that I can talk about. Mm. A lot of things. So perhaps what we can do um, with, with the eyes grace, we have an extra talk next time. Because each thing that each thing that I touch on, I could expand on that. Everything that I talk about, I can expand on that. So even the thing about you asked me up about Radio Lester, that's a whole story. Yeah. Um, so we're not gonna try and fit that in a minute. But um but one thing that I would mention now is that in 1987, when it was Marcus Garvey's centenary, I did a piece on the station to look at the life and works of Marcus Garvey. And it was an extensive piece there. And as part of that, I did a telephone interview with Marcus Garvey Jr. Mm -hmm. um, look at it for 10 minutes up. We can, we can tell you this. Yeah, man. Go on, go on, talk, man. Go right. on, talk, man. Are we um, in control? You know? Nobody in our control, but I uh, am. Uh, uh, good. So I did an uh, interview with Marcus Garvey Jr., a telephone interview from the States. And I have heard that when Marcus Garvey left Jamaica um, for the last time. He said that he does not he does not want to set foot again in the in that island. On that island. I hear that. Mm -hmm. But but I know that man and man talk all kind of things and sometimes it's exaggeration and no go so. Yeah. So normally when I do an interview on the radio I aim to ask the start of questions that I think the listener would be interested to, to get the answer to. I kind of focus my mind on that. But in this interview with Marcus Garvey Jr., 
It was a question that I was asking because I personally wanted to know. My business, if anybody else want to know, that's what we're not for them business. We want to know this. So I asked him, is it true that his father said that when, when he left Jamaica, that he said he do, does not want to set foot back on that island? And Marcus Garvey Jr. said, yeah, it's true, he said that. Now, obviously, I don't know if he said that, because he no one tell me that himself. It's him son tell me that now. And that is the closest I could get to Marcus Garvey. Mm. So, so, but him, 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 him son can, uh, you know, confirm that he said that. So I asked him, so when Jamaican government decided to exhume his body and take it back to Jamaica, did his family have anything, uh, any say in the matter? And he said, yes, they consulted with his mother. So when he tell me that, no, we just made the matter rest. But what I was thinking, and I've been thinking from that day till now, and been thinking before and still think and will always think it, is that if the man said, if they want to set foot back on, the, on that island, why well, I'm going to go up the man's boat and carry back? That means I think, you know. Why, why they do, do that? that? Yeah. Well, perhaps I never know him said that, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, and, and, and it could be said that they do it to honor Marcus Garvey. Maybe. And I can see that too. Maybe. Right. And, right. And, and you must realize that Marcus Garvey Jr. said that his mother agreed. So you can't put the blame on the government alone. If I, if I saw it mm -hmm. So, but the point is, I think, so I can't speak for Marcus Garvey now, you know, but I think that Marcus Garvey must be turning in his grave, man, to know that the man, the man of command, dig up him for that. <laughs> back when he never wanted to be, when he never wanted to be back yeah. on. Right? For so real. I think, yeah, so I think that the government should know. So, I suppose I can't take my word that Marcus Gavis Jr. said that, and Marcus Jr. passed away a little while ago, just a little while ago. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to confirm it to them. But that's what I'm saying, that Marcus Gavis did, I, I understand that Marcus Gavis did say that. And perhaps the, the Jamaican government should do something to, they can't dig up, him, dig up the, boat, the boat and carry back to England. But I think they should do something to indicate that to, to make Jamaicans and other people realize that Jamaica government did not treat Marcus Garvey good. Um, you know, um, he's who's saying they never love, never love, never love Marcus, poor Marcus. Um, the mighty diamonds, no, no, the mighty diamonds, okay, okay. and yeah, and burning spear saying. Um, no one, no one, no one remember poor Marcus. Yeah, but the, 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 the fact of the matter is that Marcus Garvey had a had a, had a horrible time. In... Your your, your, your mind is milk. milk. Your your, your mind milk. milk. Uh, yeah. Yes, yes, sir. Sorry about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What I say is that. Um, <clears throat> Marcus Garvey got treated very, very badly by the Jamaican establishment. And um, you see, it's one thing to do things that are wrong, are not, are things that are not right. And we all do things that are not right. But it is important when it is, rec it is recognized that, you know, I'm, I do something that wasn't right. You, you acknowledge it as the first step in trying to put it right. And so I think Jamaica has to acknowledge that the, the, the man who they call the first national hero, Jamaica should make it known that really we did not treat this man right. And that would start to, to put 
you know, men, men, some things, men, certain things. Mm -hmm. But you see, I don't know if the way you make, you say, I don't want to talk politics, see, but um, because when I talk about changing the mindset, so I don't have to keep using that word now because your program has the right name. This is all about mindsets. Yeah. Um, yes, I say, all your mind sets, or your mind is set, will determine what you do. Mm -hmm. So if your mind, if your mind is set right, what you're going to do is not right. So we have to move towards getting the right mindsets. True. For each of us. True. 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 So I said, and right now, I think part of the problem. Oh, well, not part of the problem. The whole problem is that Jamaica has largely, when I'm talking in general terms, have the wrong mindset. So all of that is to change the power that Rasta have shown and exerted over the whole world. It's amazing. Amazing power. All right, All right. Interesting, interesting to say that, you know, because um, um, this, 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 this leads me to that question, you know, because um, yeah. we have two, two more questions and more after that there before we wrap up on things still. Rastafari in Africa, Africa you know, know what, 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 what it's like on the ground for, you know, Rastas even returning to Africa. Africa. You know, South, South Africa, Africa um, have... Um, a huge number of, of Rastas in, 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 in South Africa. Talk to me about Rasta and, 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 and uh, Rastafari and you know, South Africa in particular. All right. Before I try to address what you asked me, I have to um, come back to mind that I have to give thanks to Jabi um, Boni. Because yeah, that's, yeah, man, that's a brother that I, I, met, I first met in South Africa in 1994 when, when they had the first election. And I was surprised to go down there and find out when I was living there. And not just Bunny, there was other black man down there, even at, in at that time, right? So no respect to, um, to Bunny. And Bunny is a man who, well, I think he was on a program a few a couple of weeks or so ago and the man who know enough about Rasta. But anyway, um so I, I give thanks to Bonnie that we that will make this link because if it was for Bonnie, I would not be on your show today. All right. So we well, hear this now. Um if you're gonna ask me about Rasta in Africa, it is not what people think. And I don't want to I don't want to say something and give up peace and then the peace don't give you a proper picture. So let me say, if it is the eyes will, then we can have another reasoning and we can touch on other, other subjects. But each subject is too big to, to address in a couple sentences. No, no man, man, go on time, man. Man. We're, We're not running, running, nobody not running, running away. How much people we have on the line? Um, um, we have 33, 33 people. people. More, more of a large job, more of a large job. Everyone where um, they are will be in the night, yeah. Zin, uh, uh, we are about 33 people. More of a set manners and respect for them and take the time. We are going to continue the reason, the elder, um, go on reason. Zin, um, yes, yeah, so, so we're not going to cut it right now because I know the people, them, you know, there it would be such a shame to try, you know, cut off it upon the people and like that, so. Okay. So you asked me specifically about South Africa. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's let me see now. I can't remember. Two thousand about about two thousand and six. Run about them time there. Perhaps a little bit later still. It's the last time I, I was in South Africa, right? Um, most of the most of the time that I spend now in Africa. It's in East Africa, okay? So I don't want to tell you, try to tell you too much about what is actually going on in South Africa as such, 
I, I can look on YouTube and get a vibes. Um, but when I when we talk, my life will talk when I know. When I life will talk when I when I think. The, um, so, I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I but I talk now what I gather from other sources now. I mean, I talk about and, and I think them, them said them, 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 and them run, and them know I run the Rasta um, Argon in South, South Africa. Africa. Well, you see, yeah, yeah, All right. Uh, uh, All right. All right. Hear this, hear this. But my did this say, um, reggae music won't get bigger and bigger until it finds the right people. We said that, you know. And that is what has happened. You see, um, reggae music starting in in Jamaica. I this this is the thing I said, right? That reggae reggae was born in Jamaica, mm -hmm. but it now lives in Kenya. It now lives in Kenya. If you go to Kenya, well, you won't be hey, 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 but, but we're there. there. You, you know, know, but them say, um, right now, France are the one for reggae music or something like that. So. Like so. And that, that them, 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 them say, say uh, France, France are the, the university of reggae Some, some, yeah, some, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, 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 but what them say that, you know, what I mean is that that's where reggae music is being made. See? Yeah, right. Well, man, what man, I mean by, by being me, though, because, though, because <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no, no, because because call call my place, uh, no, but what I said, then, when I say about France, when we, when we say um, Kenya is the home, so Reggae was born in Jamaica, mm -hmm. but it now lives in Kenya. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, the people, yeah, 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 man. yeah the, the people, right? You, you. You, you go up on a, like where you call the minibus, them call it Matatu. I don't hear that you hear, you know. You just, I just reggae, everywhere you go is reggae music here, right? So, but when, when I talk about reggae music right now, what I say is this, that um, <clears throat> we're talking about Rasta. Um, yes, as far as I gather, South Africa has more Rasta than anywhere else. And demand them take Rasta and make it into what they they, they add their own Africanness to the Rasta thing now. So Rasta is not what oh we oh we in Jamaica would think about Rasta. But but, but, but I would have said Rasta, Rasta was always Africanness. Africanness. Well, all, all right. So that's that is what I said. But but man, they say um, Rasta. Reggae music will get bigger and bigger until it finds its right people. Mm -hmm. So, so it's gone to find its right people, and its right people are, are in Africa. True. I don't know, sure you know, you know, right? So, um, so yes, um, in Africa, in in South Africa, I can't talk too too much about what's actually happening on the ground. But what I can tell you about Af about Rasta in Africa generally. Yeah. So then part of the subject, you know. The first time I go to South I go to Africa, I went to Zimbabwe. And the weekend when I reach, the weekend I go to a club. And a man come up to me in the club. And a man called me aside. Because you have music up here. The man really wanted to talk to me. And the man said to me, sir. Africans don't like the fact that black people coming from the black people come from the West and act as if because they come from the West, they are some way superior to the African. Mm -hmm. him, said Africans, him said Africans don't like it, but they're not going to tell you. That's what I'm saying to me now. They're not going to tell you. So I don't know why I'm telling me when I'm telling me that. And I come to find out the reality. I come to see it in a most 
in the starkest way. And, but again, no, I've got to tell you that story. I don't want to go to the story there for you know how missing that. That's a real, real something, right? So now, what you have is that if you're going to talk about Rasta in Africa. But, but all right, right. Ra- 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 Rasta, Rasta said, does no, so back, back up with the ISA a while ago, because you have Rasta, Rasta now where you have to say, Africa awaits its creators, and, 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 and the creators is the, 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 the Africans them now, which is the Rasta minded, Pan African minded. Um, Africans, Africans them in the diaspora who have go back, back home to Africa, Zin, and a lot of the Africans, Africans, as I said, do not, do not, um, do not, um, ascribe, uh, subscribe to that narrative. Yeah, but you see, well, you're, you're the problem. You see, if Africans from the West are going to be the creators, mm-hmm. yeah. You, you can go back and do the work now. That don't mean you have to go on like you're bigger than everybody else. You can still go and be part of the people and just be normal like the rest. Just, just like, like what, what Marcus, Marcus Gavin did say. Yes, you just go and be, be part of the people and just live with the people and nobody go on like because you come from the West. You something. You might be doing, you might be coming with things that they don't have and you might be coming to help. But it doesn't mean you have to go on like you're, you're king over them or something and they don't like it. And as a man tell me, I mean, no, it's not true. Yeah, Western, Western mindset. mindset. Yeah, yeah. So, I, listen, man. I have been, <laughs> I can't talk all night, you know, so you have to know that, right? I, <clears throat> I have, I have seen, uh, I don't want to call no name. I don't want to talk about it in a way that anybody can identify who or what I'm talking about. But I've seen a very high profile reggae band in Africa. And I have sat in a hotel room with these men, but they, never, did, not, they did not know I was a Jamaican. I can never tell them. And and I, I would have to give you the issue of how, how that come about too, right? But I have seen with my eyes and ear with my ears all those high-profile Rastaman talk about Africans. I see and hear it, right? You never believe, if I tell you who these people are, you never believe that them people could go on like that. But we see it, something I've seen. Um, a brother called me today from Kenya. And him say, him say, him say, him say the thing, him say the thing from last night about um, Nzinga. So I say, him see that. So I'm still like, him, they are Kenyan, him see it. And he don't see because I tell him, him just see it. Anyway, so in the conversation, I asked him about a brother because I, I wanted to, to make reference to this brother. So there's a brother, those two brothers who in in Rongai, that's a part of a particular part of Kenya. And two Rasta brethren. Yeah. And but when I when I go to Africa, I don't go to say I'm going to link with, with Rasta man, you know. I just go to be the people. So if a Rasta man did it, I'm with him. But if not did it, I'm not with him because I'm with the people. Yes, so, sir. So, um, so this brother, a brother, tell me that them, them, them two rest them on the boat, man. So I said, yeah, man, I like me the man there. And so contact was made and we arranged to meet this man. And I could not believe it that when we tell the man where to meet, where to meet, the man don't know where me I talk about. The man did not know where I was talking about. And it come like, you know, if somebody live in London, I said, they don't know where Trafalgar Square is. <laughs> it was like that. This man just did it. And him don't, the man, they don't mix it with the people. These people must come to them. And, and the people go to them too, you know. But they go, the people are going to them to 
get what they can, but the, the people have no respect for them and they don't know. So, um, <clears throat>